Hi guys, so I picked this up not too long ago, <laughs> a little while ago. Um, wanted to try it out, you know I love box making things. This seemed fun because it seems like everything just kind of is here, it's the Fiskars. Uh, boxes are a breeze, I don't know if that's what it's called, and I honestly don't even know how a piece of um, die cut got in there. <laughs> that's funny, must be open somewhere. Um, what is this thing called? Oh my gosh. You guys, I thought, well, I guess it's just a box maker, I don't know. Um, hmm. Either way, I'll have it linked in the description box. Those will be affiliate links for me, so I'll make a small commission if you purchase item seals links. I do think that's very funny how that is a die cut. I know exactly what it's from. It's an Anna Griffin piece. And how did it got in there? I have no idea. Uh, Alright, well, let me open this thing up, because it looks a little gangly. Um, I think we should get this out back here. Nice Fiskars, and you know, Fiskars, as I hear from you guys, sticks by their product. If something stops working even years later, they will fix it, replace it, whatever, all those kinds of things. So that's really nice. And I guess that would be called a lifetime warranty, wouldn't it? Um, it says it creates over 100 box sizes, and this is why I got me. I think this is really cool. So if you move these things, this thing goes where it needs to go, depending on your box height and your box width or whatever it is that you need. It does it for you, is what it seems like, so that's really cool. So let's just reset those guys. There's an envelope guide here with a little thing that you can, I guess, slide up and down. If it would move, that'd be great. <laughs> It's very tight. Maybe we should do it this way. So, envelope guide, uh, boxes. Let's see what all this thing makes. It says, getting board, gifting board instruction manual, sorry, to make a box. Ooh, there's quite a few steps to make an envelope. And to be honest, if I fall in love with this, I'm probably going to get rid of my We Are Mary Keepers ones because those numbers are weird. And then you have to get another one. I'm just, I'm done with that. And then make a bow. There you go. So, bow envelope and box. So I guess we should start off with the box. So it's telling you all these different things and let's just look at this because we have our tool. I believe the tool can be carried on. Hopefully I don't need to keep this somewhere separate because that would be unfortunate. Notch punch, obviously this big guy. Score lines, you know, we just kind of played with that area. Box height, it jumps up to four inches, so um, I suppose it'll make a box that's at least four inches, or at the max four inches high. Scoring stylus, again, goes right in here. Extendable scoring arm, which we need for 12 by 12 paper. Box paper size guide, box paper size guide down here. <laughs> Dash lines for bow making, okay. Box width adjusts up to four inches. Raised ruler, right here, and box instructions. Oh, that's nice that it does have some little instructions right here. So it says to make a box, set box height and box width. Check box paper size guide. That is what's cool, okay. So the envelope guide is over here, it's a little bit different, so we'll talk about that. Um, you know, you're gonna look at your card size and it's gonna tell you what size paper you need for that card size and then where you're doing your markings, I suppose. Uh, let's just keep that to the side for a moment. Here it says so set box height and box width. So let's say I want a box that's three inches high and I'm just, there's like a little dot there that I'm setting there. And as you can see, this thing moved, right, as I did that. And then box width, I love how they're like, look, height is this, width is this. Uh, three inches high. That's kind of a bigger guy. Um, with two inch sides, sure. Let's, well, that's already at two inch. So let's do something else. Let's do two and a half, just so that we can see these things moving. When you do that, it is telling you right here that your paper needs to be a certain size. Now, it's a little scary because it's a little bit off. Like right now, I'm looking at this. I think that means eight and a half, right? Don't you? I mean, I don't know. It's pointing at something, and I feel like it's pointing at eight and a half. It could be pointing at eight and, you know, uh, seven eighths. I don't know, right? Because it's like right there. But let's just pretend um, that it's pointing at eight and a half. Um, place paper flush against raised ruler and box with bar. So, okay, I'm going to cut a piece of paper at eight and a half inches square. I guess that's what they're telling you here. This is going to be very interesting. I will be right back. I'm just gonna cut down my paper to eight and a half inches and hopefully that'll uh, be okay. So, <laughs> you know what's so funny? I'm like, well, what about the lid? It makes a box that's all in one, you guys. Like, it locks into itself. So, that'll be very cool. Uh, let's see here, eight and a half inches. It's already eight and a half in the other direction, so hopefully I didn't cut that too wonky. Again, you know, all these things are gonna have a little give because you are eyeballing some of these things, right? 
I don't know that I need this out here right now, but if I do, I will pull this out. And does it pull out just that easy, or is it? It's really in there. Yeah. Okay. So if I need that, we have that, right? So we have it at three inches. We have this one set at two and a half inch height or width. Excuse me. Um, height here, width here, just like this at the beginning. <laughs> All right. And it's saying check indicated box paper size guide and trim paper to square size. So apparently they're always going to be a square. So we got it. Hopefully we're about right. And I think what it is, it's going to be about there, right? So anyway, place paper flush against raised ruler and box width bar punch notch. Okay. So we have this guy. It says to place the paper again. I'm going to look at this because it looks like I'm already wrong. Okay, we're going in this way. Did I move that? No. Okay. A little scary. Not going to lie. Um, oh, this is interesting. So I'm assuming, yeah, this has a guide on it. So even though it says box width, there's like a notch, like it's, it's a thickness there. So that's what you're butting up against. Okay. So I have it there. And I have it in this direction, and it says to place paper flush against raised ruler, box width bar. And so it's against the ruler back here, and it's against this little notched area, and to punch it. Ooh, that's a solid punch. Okay. Um, and then it says score all three lines with the stylus. So let's put that back. Oopsies. Let's put that back. We have this guy. And all three lines. So what it's saying is from right here, there's a groove here. I hope you can see that. But basically it's coming out of here. And it is easy to find that. Now, I just said that, and of course I'm doing a poor job, but it was not hard to find that area. It's right opposite that little bar. I know with the We Are Member Keepers, it's a little bit difficult. Um, and I'm just saying my opinion on that. I don't, you know, I want to make sure we're at the same line here. Let me see. Do I find it? I feel like I did. Maybe. Mm, we're getting a little wonky, guys. We're getting a little wonky. I think we're there. Okay. So what it is, is this is super thick paper I'm using and I'm scared. So I don't want to dig into it in an ugly way, but it's a little scary here. What is that? Okay, no wonder. I was like, there's something around here that's making it wonky. It's that. There's like a little apparatus there that gives it a little bump. Okay, and then the third line is this. So first line here, second line across, third line is just from here. There's a little groove in there that we're going to follow and just be confident about it. I guess that's the problem. See right in here, there's some wonkiness because of that. Ugh, okay, I don't prefer that, but okay, there we go. That, um, repeat steps three and four on remaining sides. So this is interesting. So I'm gonna take this out and just go to the next corner, I guess, <laughs> right? That's weird. Let me see what this ends up looking like, because I feel like you're supposed to punch all of it. Oh, okay, no wonder. Later, you flip the paper over, align, and punch all sides again. And that's just the punching part, I think. So, interesting. So we're just going to the next corner and get our punch. This is also not right in front of me, so it's kind of... I feel a little, like, une unsteady, you know? Because it's not right in front of me. I would bring this this way, really get in there. Okay, we're doing better this time. I'm more confident. <laughs> there we go. And then number three, I just wanna show you real quick. This third line, obviously it stops here. The groove stops and then there's a space and then this line is here. So I guess you're just gonna stop at that groove. You don't have to keep trying to go across like I did because it's not gonna allow for that anyway. So box or line three stops right there. It should go all the way down, <laughs> okay? So that's, on um, you know, if you want to just continue it, there we go. But I wouldn't do it on the board to see how it kind of went. Boop. Okay, next side. I'm scared that I move this thing. I did not. <laughs> okay. Punch. Oh, sorry, that's loud. And I think it either moved on me. Hopefully I didn't. <laughs> Line. This is getting easier. I'm getting more confident as far as finding that. And then score line three. Again, kind of ending on its own like there. And I'm just gonna, okay. And then the last side, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Bring it up to this notch. Hold on to it while I punch. So it doesn't slip. 
This is so funny. I don't know why it's getting easier for me. I guess just because you kind of know where it's at. And then this one here. And bring it right down to that corner. Why not? Okay. So that's all four corners. But then it says to flip it. Flip paper over, align, and punch all sides. So I'm going to flip it over. And just, it doesn't matter here. You're just going to bring it in here and punch. So all we're doing now, and actually these are lined up. I can see that. So punch that one. Bring it this way. We're almost there, guys. Punch that one. Bring it this way. Punch that one. And I'm sorry for all the noise because I'm sure that's loud. Okay. <laughs> Now, punch lock on all corners, fold to assemble. Punch lock on all corners. So what we're doing is taking this, I'll go ahead and put that away. This is the lock punch. And okay, do you like folding towards the groove or away, you know what I'm saying? For me, I like where you pushed in for that to be where I'm folding later. So um, that's just something to note. Um, but anyway, we're going to take this and pop it in here and it says punch lock on all corners. Oh, that sounds scary. There we go. That's why <laughs> like it didn't go all the way through. Okay. Oh, it rounded it and it made this little notch. Okay. I'm doing it all in the same direction. I hope that's okay. If not, then we just totally messed up, but hopefully that's okay. It didn't say anything about flipping it or doing anything else weird. It just says to do that. And I guess we're done with this. So what we're going to do is fold this in on all the score lines. Now, do you like bone folding? Go for it. Um, I'm just folding in on all the score lines. I know they might be hard to see. There's another set here. This is kind of like an explosion box. You know how you do those and then you just kind of poop, get those going. And that is your box. That is very interesting. And this goes up like this. And then they interlock. <gasps> That's crazy. Okay. They're giving me resistance because I didn't score score them, you know, like these guys. I don't really know how you would do that in a way that's super great. I guess you can lay down each piece like this, like I'm doing, just being careful, you know, just to get a really nice crease. And then just forget which side you came from and if you redid it or not. <laughs> I'm like, did I redo these? Okay, there's that one. I feel like I redid some of these. Uh, yeah, I think I got them all. Maybe not this one. And then this inside piece, again, where it came in, you can just leave it there or have to kind of give it a crease. Now, there's also probably ways to adapt that, to be honest, if you don't like the way it just opens up. You can probably just cut these and glue them so it actually makes the box. But I think the way they interlock, you kind of have to let it do its own thing. So it is a different kind of box. Um, so I'm pushing it together to lock those two together. Oh my goodness, that's actually really cute. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other ways I could use that for other projects, right? It's kind of a handy little punch to have. Um, and then you can lock this one. That one's a little tighter, and it also has to do with my scoring, I'm sure. Oh, yep. Okay. Let's do that again. It's really tight, guys. <laughs> Let's go. No, no, no. No, no, no. Hmm. Since that one's not handling it very well, let's try it again. Ugh. Let's bring these guys in. You know what I think it has to do with those papers on the inside? Let's bring these guys out. And also, like I said, I had to cut this myself, you know, so it's possible that I didn't quite get eight and a half on the other side, so it's a little bit off or whatever. That's much better. <laughs> there we go. The other one gave me some resistance, so there's probably something wonky in the way I cut the, the paper on the other side. That is a cute box, I'm not going to lie. Very simple, um, you know. And let's see about the sizing. It is three by two and a half. Three inches tall, two and a half here. Okay different. We'll see how I feel about that as time passes. <laughs> um, okay, let's see about envelope. Now the only thing is it does have pictures here as far as box, but it doesn't say anything about envelopes. So let's see if they are any more difficult or how easy they are. I think I might like this one. 
famous last words before I start trying. I think I'm going to like this one for envelopes. <laughs> Select card size and check paper size on printed chart. Trim paper to size. So let's make a... Oh, do we have... Oh, okay. So the envelope sizes start from two, or the card sizes, two by three and a half, all the way down to six by eight and a half. So you have that. Um, and then obviously five by sevens in here, and then all kinds of other wonky things. Um, I wanted to see if we had four by six. Oh, four by six. Let's do that because that's like not typical. So we'll see how it comes out. Eight and a quarter inch square piece of paper and the ruler position should be at three and three eighths. So let me cut down a piece of paper to eight and a quarter inch square and I'll be right back. So I tried to pay real close attention that I have exactly eight and a quarter inches but we will see. Okay so select card size and we did that. Um, place paper flush against raised ruler with end beneath correct ruler position. See printed chart. Score along score line two. So it told me three and three eighths inch ruler position. So I uh, bring this here, and I guess at this point this doesn't matter, or maybe you can move it so it helps you out. That's what it looks like. So um, I'm going to move this just out of the way, and it told me to put it at three and three eighths. So three and a quarter, three and a half, three and three eighths would be the mark right before that one, and. Um, that's different from here, so we're not even going to pay attention to that. We're just going to put it up here, 3 and 3 eighths, and actually, that's like here. This actually gets in the way, so maybe I should just move it out of the way, or just pull out more. Yeah, it doesn't go out any more than that. That's weird. Um, yeah, interesting. I suppose if your number was a number that's like in here, you can let this, let's say it said two and a quarter, and I would put it at two and a quarter, and then this can kind of help you out just to keep it in place. But mine isn't that. It's three and three eighths, and so it's out here. And I guess I'm just going to have to hold it. So it's the mark between a quarter and a half, right? Three and three eighths. Okay. Um, <laughs> punch notch. I'm just holding with my hand. Score along score line two. And score line two is the one that goes across. Remember we did one, two, three, and it's telling me just to do two. So two is here-ish. This paper is 110 pound and it is really tough. Okay. Um, rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees. Align second line on paper score line one. Okay, so. Rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees. Align score line on paper over score line one. So let's just turn that 90 degrees. Sorry, it's almost impossible. Maybe. Like, okay, we're here. We just did this punch, right? We did the punch. We did the line. Now you're going to take the score line we just created and line it up with score line one. Now that means we're going to turn, turn, turn the score line. Score line one is here. It's impossible for me to see it. So what happens is I'm going to just bring it over here and try to make sure I'm in the same spot, I guess. Does that even make sense? How do I know that that's still correct? I guess that's good. I'm just sliding it in there, which basically it means on the opposite side of this notch, remember? Um, the opposite side of that guy. So I'm going to bring it a little bit closer and hopefully that's correct. I don't know. Um, a line, okay, punch notch, score line, score along score line two. So again, score line two was this guy, if you guys recall. So we're bringing it here, score line two. One, two, three, we know that. Um, repeat step three twice. So that means rotate it completely. We're lining this up against the score line, which really, to me, I'm just lining up against this flap since we can't really see it. I can see the score line just a little bit down here, though, so that does help out. Um, I would say do it the same way every time, if you can. And, oh, punch. Score line, okay. Then again, bring it around so we're matching up this score line against score line one, which again is just a little bit opposite of that guy. I have a feeling this is gonna be wonky. <laughs> so let's just leave it there. Uh, look where the score line's kind of matching up with that one, but not quite. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. There we go. And score line two again. Okay. We have something going on there. Hope you can see those do line up pretty well, the score lines. And it says round all corners with punch. And they're talking about the punch on this side because we don't need this other punch, obviously. So they're talking about this side. I'm just gonna turn it. If my table was, or my 
film area was larger. Sorry guys, this is gonna be loud. I'm just buttoning it up in there, giving it a punch. The punch is not hard to operate. It just sounds very loud. Okay, and that's if you want a core rounder. I guess if you don't, you don't. And fold and secure wings with adhesive. So let's just put this guy to the side. And again, I like to fold in. This paper is super thick. It's from Hobby Lobby. And I guess I don't use it often enough because it is ridiculous. It's their primary colors pack, I believe. Again, like I said, I probably did a little something wonky. Hope you can see there and there. It's a little bit different. I don't like when these things poke up like that, so I'll do something in a minute to take care of that. But so far, like this was much easier. It definitely holds a four by six look. It's just a little bit larger than four. Uh, by it's like half an it's like six and a half. So it's like one, two, three, four, and an eighth or something by six and a half. So Obviously your card will fit in there. A little bit long on the one side, but I guess that's the easiest, best way they can do it. I don't care for this, so I'm gonna cut that off, but that's just me. Some people might score it there and then tuck it back. I just kinda eyeball where this is at to like where it joins the other side. And I like the way that looks better. I would do the same thing on the wear member keepers or whatever. And as far as glue, since I don't really know where this is touching, I'll put glue right down close to the bottom and glue right up to this edge and those should meet in a way that <laughs> we'll glue this nicely so we'll just hold that down for a second and I like this for envelopes now that means we need to keep this handy though so I don't think there's a place where this for this to go um, of course you can take a picture of it I suppose with like your phone and then just kind of line up what you need but anyway I'll be right back as far as the envelope, that is a fine looking envelope. I mean, this, you guys remember the We Remember Keepers one, the tab comes out here and people are like, well, just turn it back. I was like, what? Why? That's not even an envelope. That's gross. I mean, again, who knows what the other sizes might end up looking like, but for now, I think this is a very nice uh, envelope maker. Good thing I didn't jinx myself. All right, we have a box, we have an envelope. Let's try the bow, and the bow is super basic, guys, because it's basically a strip and you're just cutting little sections in it. So um, there is some info here. Select paper size to make a bow on printed charts bow guide. The bow guide is right here, y'all. You have uh, three sizes to choose from, it looks like. So um, if we bring this down, uh, I'm not looking at these numbers, that's card size, paper size, ruler position, that, that's for up here, but for down here you need the paper size, the ruler position, and the ruler position again. So I don't know, whatever, it doesn't really, which is interesting, it's not telling you how big the bow is, right? I need a strip that's one and a half by ten, let's just do that, whatever this is on, one and a half inch by ten, and I'll be right back. One and a half by ten, and it says ruler position should be at one and ruler position two. So ruler position one, sorry, should be at two. You guys, I don't know. <laughs> ruler position two should be at five. So let's just place the end of paper strip beneath notch punch. Center using dash lines. Punch notch, repeat on other end. So they're just telling you to come bring this in here. You have these little score lines or like notch lines or whatever. And I guess this one tucks right in there in the larger set. Okay. Punch there, oh, okay. And then do the same thing on the other side. They're starting to weld out here at Fiskars. Okay, <laughs> check that out. Um, place paper flush against raised ruler with end beneath ruler position one. So ruler position one is over here. Okay, sorry about that. So it's against the ruler, like this raised ruler. We're not talking about these things over here. Just this guy. And it told me uh, ruler position ones should be at two. So at two, actually this is in the way kind of. I'm just gonna put the ends at two. It says to punch the notch and it says to turn over and repeat. So I'm gonna turn over and at two, punch that notch. And I'm assuming we're gonna do the same thing to the other end. Rotate paper 180 degrees and repeat step three. So yeah, so over here, ruler position two, flip it over, back at two again, roughly, <laughs> there we go. And then it says place paper flush against raised ruler with end beneath ruler position two. And on my chart, ruler position two is five. So down here on the gray words, right, we're looking at five. 
So at the end of this guy, I'm going to put it at five. And we are going to punch, flip it over and punch. Honestly, this if it looks cute, this is very easy. Um, you're basically at the halfway and then just a couple of inches in, you know, de depending. So I think you can probably make up your own bow sizes after doing this a couple times because like I said, there's only three of them on here, or there are only three. Now it says, bring notch intersections together to form a bow and secure with adhesive. <laughs> so let's kind of round this out a little bit. And I'm going to use a wet glue, but basically what they're saying is bring these two together. Uh, which is kind of interesting because then you're going to bring this one back out, right? So let's let's try this. I don't know. I'm just putting glue on here. I have no idea. I'm on the back side. So we're bringing these guys together here. Basically gluing just that area over here because we're going to bring this back out. <laughs> Very interesting. And then this guy's going to come back out this way. Do you see what I'm doing? And I'm just eyeballing that. It's kind of interesting since it has a scoring tool that they didn't bother to talk about scoring. But I guess you could score it here. Now since I'm just holding this and it's going to take a minute, I'm just going to put some glue on this back side too. Why not? Just keeping it flat. And now it's a little bit wonky. Hold on. Ugh. See how it's off right there? It's kind of making me not very happy. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to hold that down. I put glue in the back in the center, and then I put glue in between these two notches to hold it. It's a little bit scary, guys. So basically this same thing. I'm going to put some glue here. I don't know how much, but about that much. Bringing this guy over to the center. That's touching that glue. And then you're going to push it back again, the tail. Which is kind of interesting. Again, that's what kept looking wonky on my other one, so I'm going to be more careful on this one. Hmm, there we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue just so I don't have to hold this later. So I'm going to keep holding everything until I'm happy and that's set up. And I'll be right back to show you what that so, looks like. That is our bow. Of course, you got to put something in the center. I mean, you can put some twine, just put a cute thing, maybe a heart, maybe whatever it is you want to put in the center. It doesn't have a holder for it. Um, usually, it's just like a little strip of paper. I cut a little strip of paper. I was thinking, okay, you can probably do lots of different things with this. But this goes in so deep that you can only do so much, right? Um, I was thinking it'd be cuter to use a skinnier piece so it's closer to this, so it's more of a dovetail instead of like this length here or this width at the top and bottom. But then if you did that, you had a little piece. These are these notch in almost half an inch, I would say. So you kind of got to keep that in mind, even though we have a nice size here. Probably what they're giving on the guide is the best thing you can do for those. So um, that's that. Okay, guys. So. Let's put this guy away. I, you know, they could have made definitely a little something for this to go in. And I looked really hard because I know, um, oh, on my punch board, this guy. Thank you guys. Yes, got the spring. Um, it actually does have a little place here to put the uh, staples, uh, which I thought was interesting. Hold on. So apparently it opens not so easily. <laughs> there we go. Everything's falling off of here. Um, so you can put extra staples in there, which is really cool. Um, but... This does not have anywhere to put that. So this is very important to us. So, I mean, I guess I can just keep it with it. That's kind of, hmm. I probably will take a picture of it just to have it somewhere, you know, in my, somewhere. But yeah, there's no place for this to slide in or lock in or be kept anywhere. So, and you know, us crafters, <laughs> I might lose that thing in two seconds. But not bad. Does it make boxes? Yes. Is the box kind of interesting because it does take up some space on the inside with the paper the way it's just sticking in there yes but again this is a weird shaped box i think if i had something obviously i would make a bigger box um to accommodate for the paper just kind of being in there but you can also again do some different things with that but i feel like it needs to be free open because otherwise it's going to be really hard to unlock these bits right so we have our box it makes a handsome uh envelope i think it's really nice it looks nice i mean even the sides look really nice it's not like it's more stylized you know like on this edge instead of just being like straight up and might be sticking out or something it kind of comes in it's interesting i like that i think it's really pretty um and then you know an interesting bow i think this is just something else they just kind of threw in like hey what else could i do eh, maybe a bow <laughs> But uh, that'd be cute if any of this stuff matched. Uh, you know, just put a cute center on it. Obviously, this one you have to put that on in a different way because you don't want to mess your little clippy there. Or I suppose you could present the gift like this too, right? If you put it in a different way and then have to open it from the bottom. I mean, yeah. I mean, it does what it says. But there we are. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, 
I'll have some images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.